that letter was to me, and it was in the form of email. I forwarded a copy of that email to someone who had asked me about it, which I have every right to do. Well, yesterday the city attorney brought to my attention that he was aware that on such and such a date that I forwarded XYZ email to such and such a person. And my, my position is, so what? I'm an open book. This is not private information in my email. So today we get an email that we're going to have a, an executive committee meeting to determine if the ethics board should investigate. I just want you to know what kind of environment we have right now in City Hall and what needs to get fixed. That aldermen should not be under the threat of the administration monitoring their emails, giving them false information, denying them information. So that's the kind of environment we have in City Hall right now. And that's why I'm fighting like I'm fighting. Good morning, Racine. We're here to ask the question, what the heck is going on? <laughs> you got a clue, George? Well, I think we got a clue, but uh, this it, is it, just a hello portion. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but Jim, no clue. We'll find out more as the program goes along. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being here, and we're going to talk about the uh, development in the Sandy Widener case, just this uh, immediate past week, and it was sent down to Kenosha because sweet little Kenosha. Yeah, that little yeah. country town. Our everybody friends to the south. Everybody does yeah. that down there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Finally, there's going to be a resolution of this. You know, I mean, the judge is going to look at this and he's going to say, "Oh my God, are you guys kidding? Are you kidding? Get the heck out of here with this crap! This is crazy!" And it was all about the secrecy of the courts here in Racine. They got their secret courts down there too. Yep, because the judge down there confirmed that uh, well, this should all be kept under wraps. Kirkman is his name, by the way. If you want yeah. to know Chad Kirkman. Chad yeah. Kirkman, yeah. Running for re-election in the spring. Yeah. So if there's <clears> anybody <throat> out there looking to run against him, no, yeah, it's please time. step do. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have something to say, would you? Good <laughs> yeah. grief. I mean... <sighs> emails. We're talking about emails. Emails that everybody's seen. Well, we're really not but talking about be super emails. Secret. We're, they're, we're, what we're talking about is they're suppressing Sandy Widener for some reason. No. They do not want this woman to have any credibility in the community, and they want to shut her up. Why would they want to do that? Mm. It's not about the emails. It can't be about the emails because they're really benign. Yeah, there's, there's no nothing emails, in there. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's let's um, let's go back to the beginning and kind of the the backstory on Sandy Widener <clears throat> and where Good it all idea. started. <laughs> um, we can we can start with the fact that she was a 20 year alderman. Now there's probably people out here that haven't seen this before. We did a show, uh, episode 98, actually kind of brought this out at, in, in the beginning here when we realized. Um, so that, that's like two years ago. Correct. And she had been running for mayor. She was a 20 year alderman. She had uh, uh, decided at the time that uh, John Dickert had uh, resigned as mayor, and Corey Mason, uh, the current mayor, was running. She threw her head in the ring, and that was July of 2017. Um, she had, at that time, uh, been kind of disgusted with the fact that there were some major developments in Racine, uh, uh, property developments, namely Machinery Row. She was very vocal on the fact that there were monies uh, misappropriated, uh, and she had been making uh, videos and different things during her campaign about what was happening at Machinery Row. And I'm going to actually show one right now before we dig into it a little deeper, but I'd like to show yeah. that, yeah. just to show what yeah, the basis of this was. Hello, my name is Sandy Widener. There is an important issue that I think the public needs to entirely understand regarding Machinery Row. In June of 2014, then Mayor John Dickert, City Administrator Tom Friedel, State Representative Corey Mason, had a press release announcing this huge development that was going to take place along the riverfront in the city of Racine in what is now known as Machinery Row. In that announcement, uh, Rodney Blackwell announced that he was going to purchase properties for a redevelopment that would be uh, commercial and residential and it would be a private and a public endeavor for this development. However, there was never any private money put into this development. All of the investment is public dollars and those public dollars are an investment to achieve 
more public dollars for this development. By September of 2014, having done his due diligence, Rodney Blackwell determined that he could not move forward with this project. Fast forward from July until the first week in December, we had heard nothing. So when we convened in the executive committee last week to hear about the revised plans for the development, we're not hearing so much about a private public endeavor. We're hearing about a public endeavor. That didn't mean the city of Racine did not want to have that property, though, because after all, it's along the water, it's along the river. So the city of Racine, under the leadership of John Dickert and Tom Friedel, convinced Rodney Blackwell to stay in the game. And they did that with enticing him with a 10% development fee that would be provided to him out of money we were loaning him for the purchase of those properties. So we, the council, were told that the properties that he wanted to purchase cost four and a half million dollars, when in all actuality, the real purchase price was only four million five fifty thousand. So from that four and a half million dollars, he, Rodney Blackwell, received a kickback in the form of this loan that went into a development account called an escrow account. Mr. Blackwell loan, borrowed money from the city of Racine, cut a different deal with the sellers of the property, set up an escrow account for him to draw money out of over the last year and a half. I had no idea that I should even have asked the question of the administration if something like this would have happened. When this came to light, this is where, you know, the city administrator kept saying to us, the council, well, he's paying his interest payments. He paid his interest payments with money that he took from the sellers <laughs> that he renegotiated after we loaned him the four and a half million. So in essence, we are paying that because we loaned him that money. From that account, he could dip into at his own will to take out what he considers to be development costs. So. The enticement for Rodney Blackwell to stay in this was the $450,000 account that he depleted in less than a year and a half. So the city of the Common Council having no idea that Rodney Blackwell wanted out of this before this development even got off the ground, I want you to know that I voted against loaning him the money in December of 2014 because it just didn't feel right. Something did not, he had nothing invested in this project. And we were aware of that. But we continued to plunge forward believing that the administration was giving us accurate information, which ultimately turned out to be incorrect. The council was given bad information and were basically lied to. So people really need to understand the kind of financial situation that the past administration has left for you, the taxpayers, to deal with in their wake, and that the next mayor is going to have to deal with. I think the only candidate out there running that is going to know how to deal with this situation is Sandy Widener. Sandy Widener had the common sense back in December of 2014 to say this is not a good deal for the taxpayers. We cannot proceed with machinery roll. This has not been properly vetted. We need to you know, sit back and think about this. That Sandy Widener is going to be the one that's going to have to fix right, it. So basically what's going on there is, is uh, she's very, very innocently asking questions about some irregularities in the financial surrounding the Machinery Row project. And it made some people very uncomfortable, apparently. Right. Now, when you say innocent... What you were talking about, there's no malevolence there. She's just no. saying... They're just saying Look, folks, council members, this money isn't being paid by the developer. It's being paid by us. Right. Yeah. You know, and she, she just wanted, as a matter of fact, and that was said, lied to. The like, council. She was always lied to. believed in the councils. You know, right. she she thought the council should know, and she had the, she had the the power structure right there. It was the council was running the city, not the mayor. You know, that's the way right. it's supposed to be. That's the way that it's legally set up, and the mayor and his staff support the council. And she's telling the council members, this is what's going on. Right. You know, right. not like, hey, because you don't want to find out, you know. Right. None of that stuff. She, and and she brought that into the campaign. That's what she's saying. And she brought she's just being straightforward yeah. saying, look, here's what's going on. Right. And then she brought that into the campaign saying, hey, we got some issues here. We just, we borrowed $4.5 million. We're in the hole for almost $11, $12 million. We've made some major 
blunders and uh, elect me for mayor and we'll get to the bottom of it. Well, that was not what they were going to have. Well, yeah. And, no, and, and, they and didn't the, want her getting in the mayor. No, and at the time, crazy. it's not that we were so aware of that, other than now we're finding out all the corruption was going on. They were aware of it. Absolutely, they were. They knew what she was yeah. uncovering. We might not have had the full story yet, like, like you've heard from us now, but they knew that she was beginning to find out things that weren't supposed to be found out. Yeah, don't worry about that lump in the carpet. There's <laughs> that's that's nothing going on under there. But one of the ones that, uh, uh, on her campaign trail, she was at uh, Pierce Woods, which is a park in the city of Racine, and she was talking to constituents in that particular area, and she had brought up uh, kind of an interesting uh, part of that campaign and talked about how she was being monitored at this point. Now, this is August of 2017. She had, a, she had put her hat in a ring at the end of July 2017. This was about the <clears> middle of August 2017. And she was, and I'm going to play it. I'm just going to play this okay. Pierce Woods. Uh, and you can just kind of listen to her, what she's talking about. I think people need to be aware of and even be alarmed about. I've suspected for a long time that the city attorney was monitoring my city email account. And I'm an open book, so it doesn't bother me at all. Well, yesterday I got verification that he has done that. I had gotten an email letter from Rebecca Mason, who is now our, our uh, municipal judge, uh, regarding an issue. And that letter was to me, and it was in the form of email. I forwarded a copy of that email to someone who had asked me about it, which I have every right to do. Well, yesterday the city attorney brought to my attention that he was aware that on such and such a date that I forwarded XYZ email to such and such a person. And my, my position is, so what? I'm an open book. This is not private information in my email. So today we get an email that we're going to have a, an executive committee meeting to determine if the ethics board should investigate a, an official for providing official business that they received because they were an official, something to that effect. What it is, I talked a little bit about the firewall, that's the ice bucket. That's the bucket of ice water that they're trying to silence me. And I'm not trying to alarm anybody or, you know, boo-hoo me. I just want you to know what kind of environment we have right now in City Hall and what needs to get fixed. That aldermen should not be under the threat of the administration monitoring their emails, giving them false information, denying them information. So that's the kind of environment we have in City Hall right now, and that's why I'm fighting like I'm fighting. Okay, well, what she's talking about there is she's kind of surprised by the fact that she has gotten wind of the reality that her emails are being monitored. Her communication with her constituents is being reviewed by somebody in City Hall. And it turns out specifically it was the city attorney city that attorney. was doing it. Right. And it, she realized that for some reason or another, they did not want her or any members of the council, for that matter, to know certain things that were going on. Let alone Be pass it along to yeah. other people. Because right. when she started asking these questions about the financial picture down at City Hall, then that's when they started this monitoring emails and... And they came out with that statement about, or the city attorney came out with that statement about confidentiality. Right. And all of the and emails. And even then, by the way, when I, when, when I say passing along, because I got some of them, Jim, you got some of them, it wasn't like she was telling on anybody. Some of it was just oh, information that we'd ask about. I mean, I'd ask about the possibilities of, of some of the voting dates on the special election. Right. And she got the information and passed it on to me. Well, <laughs> that turns out to be something that... I wasn't supposed to know about, it. right? Huh? Well, Why not? <laughs> the whole it, it came down to ethics. Is like well, she's got a problem. We've got a problem with her with ethics. So what they do at that point? Letney Scott Letney, the city attorney, calls an ethics uh, committee meeting of all the aldermen. It was critical. It was very uh, high level meeting that had to, people had to come. But it wasn't explained what was the subject exactly. matter. <clears throat> when they got there, though, it was a PowerPoint presentation of emails that were sent by. Alderman Widener, 
and uh, they asked the executive committee, which was really the aldermen, um, should, should, should we refer this to the ethics committee to be reviewed because this is attorney-client privilege. And it was, I guess, a pretty elaborate uh, display by the attorney, you know, just very over the top on really mundane emails. They voted, oh, yeah, we should really take it to the Common Council and look okay. at it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. You, you yeah, have to remember the, to the, the content committee. of what it's in. You don't have the sharp, the brightest bulbs on the string in there in these older persons. And I think they were also thinking, well, if there's nothing there, nothing will happen. So Possible. let's. And it was uh, supposed to be unknown to the public. Who this Correct. was about. Right, exactly. But, of course, it gets leaked to the, the local paper, and, of course, they put it in, and actually use Sandy Widener's name. You yeah. Know? No. So then it goes to the Common Council. They, they approve to look at the, to go to the Ethics Committee. Of course, this was all to, to, to taint her campaign for running for mayor. That's, that's what it was. It was the height of the campaign. Exactly. Yeah, it right was at there. a very critical point in the campaign, just a matter of weeks, really, yes. before the election. And from all of the data that we've been able to gather and look at, there was a strong possibility that Sandy would get elected mayor. Yes, she was. And she that was. was not something that they wanted to happen. Correct. Because she was already asking questions that were making them uncomfortable. If she was mayor, oh, my God, Whoa. the lid would be off. <laughs> right. So, you know, this and was a thing about clamping down on her and shutting her up. Exactly. So... As of uh, October, Corey Mason wins the uh, uh, race for mayor in October. The interesting part is Corey Mason was tied to Machinery Row very heavily. Scott Letney was tied to Machinery Row very heavily. And John Dickert, who had already been out, had been also tied to it. And there were other people involved, probably parts of the finance department and what Friedel have you. Friedel was involved. Yeah, yeah. Tom Friedel, which <clears throat> uh, had already resigned because, you know, the heat was coming. And when you say tied in a machinery role, it's more than just the development of it and, uh, and pushing it forward. It was yeah. in some of the shenanigans that were going on behind the scene with regards to shifting money around and setting up straw men and that yep. type of stuff. Yep. Well, there so, were irregularities and, and possibly illegalities. You know, I mean, oh, we, very likely. Yeah, we yeah. very strongly believe that there were illegal things that exactly. went on. That, that's what I'm talking about. So it was more and than it was just also promoting it. A, it was also yeah. it was part of the getting involved with the illegal. It was also a criminal complaint uh, by uh, well, it was Dennis Monty filed a criminal complaint earlier in that year. So the pressure was there. the The information was already out there as to what was happening. Sandy Widener was going to get to the bottom of it. You get to the bottom of it. You might have people going to jail. You'd have you'd have some. Well, definite, Carews would be ruined. Ruined. Yeah. No, yeah. no question. Oh yeah, about be, it. absolutely. You'd have a career ending. There's no doubt about that. But anyway, so as of October, Corey Mason wins the uh, race for mayor. He becomes the mayor. All of a sudden, there's there's no forwarding of these uh, PowerPoint to the. Ethics committee. Now all of a sudden, that's just gone. Not that's yeah. over. Oh, well, I remember Sandy what? was like waiting, like when is she going to get called in front <laughs> of the, the committee? Yeah. That's over. No, no worries. We won, so it doesn't matter anymore. We're going to let that. Well, in December of after a number of times asking for this PowerPoint uh, presentation and emails, uh, she files after multiple times her attorney asks for it, doesn't get it. She files a mandamus, which is something that forces them by law in a court to pass this this over to her, this information. She files it, and immediately the city attorney passes out these emails to all the common council members saying, well, these are the emails. There is no need to go to court over this because these are the emails. Alderman Widener said, these aren't the emails. These are not the ones that were in that You mean PowerPoint. they shifted emails? Oh, yeah. You mean they shifted them around, made <laughs> yeah. them different? Yeah. Made a different yeah. email? Yeah. Yeah. A couple <laughs> subtle changes, yeah. you know. I mean. So, of course, it goes to court. It goes to... <laughs> Gasker Gevich, uh, local uh, Racine court, <laughs> he seals the he seals literally. Now you have to remember, Letney now hires his own, basically his own personal attorney on your dime. Own, yeah, and it, it's at a top dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, Cohen was the attorney out of the firm in Milwaukee. They managed to seal the the court case. The when they sealed proceeds. it, you sealed it. You didn't even know it existed. It's yeah. one thing to seal the, the information in the court case because of privacy things or you know other things, conditions like that. This you couldn't even find a court case. You, you couldn't look even it find up, it on CQ. No, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's what I mean. Right. You, you look, you look it up on the on the internet and nothing. can't find a court case. Right. Nothing, nothing, nothing on Sandy Widener. 
So Judge Gasker Gavich in April of 2018 slams the gavel and says the city of Racine, um, uh, uh, do you have to give up no information? Uh, this is a sealed case. It's attorney-client privilege. There is no information here to be given to Miss Widener. That was it. Of course. And, and this was information that was going to go to the ethics board. Yeah, this was basic, all gonna, Basically, yeah. this is evidence. Exactly. Now, if you're being charged with any kind of a, a crime or misbehavior of any kind, in this country, you're supposed to have access to the evidence that's being used against you. Correct. Not here. Not, no, not, not right. this time. Not to mention mm -hmm. there's another little avenue in here. It's called open records request. If the government yeah. has particular information, you're allowed to go ahead and get that information. So she had a, a two-path structure for this, inf uh, for this information. One was for her own defense, and the other was, well, it's an open records request. I don't right. even know and the information. This is government. government. And this the critical thing was what, what you brought up is the fact that the, the group of emails that were in the original PowerPoint and the group of emails that were in the court were different. Correct. That's, yeah. and that's, that's, that's very interesting, that's very interesting point. Yep. Yep. development. Yeah. And that's so, development. but of course, if you don't see them, then you can't prove that they were different. Right. And so, who made the difference? Why would there be a difference? Who submitted those emails to the court? Right. Well, that would have been the attorney. That would have been the attorney. Yeah. But here, let's just take one step here, and I want to go back to uh, why, how this was orchestrated in the beginning. You had. Back in uh, June of 2017, uh, Mayor John Dickert had left office or was leaving office, and Corey Mason had stepped up. To, he's going to run for mayor, mm -hmm. and he was endorsed, of course, by the Democratic Party. Um, Dennis Weiser, who was heavy Democrat, had been uh, uh, intern mayor, interim, interim mayor, mayor yeah. at that time. <clears throat> now you had Corey Mason, you had the uh, interim mayor, and you had Scott Letney. Those Three is my my personal belief is that they orchestrated this ethics complaint against Widener at that point. They had to stop her from moving forward. She was she was campaigning hard. She had a big following. She was raising money. I mean, she she had a good shot at being mayor, and that's who I think was the original orchestrated that move to get that to the ethics committee. So once they got that in and they realized that they had uh, beaten her. There was no need to move forward with that. Let's just let that yeah. go. Well, Widener, uh, to her credit continued on. I want to know the bottom of this. You know, this was dirty politics. At best, it was dirty politics. It really was a cover-up, I believe, for the machinery row. And I see that now more clearly now once it's going to Kenosha. But let's just go back to um, uh, Widener when she, 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 she then uh, newspaper organizations and said, hey, this is wrong to file, to have a, a closed court on open records. It was a constitution, constitutional question, exactly. which was brought forward by, well, Harry Waite was the guy that really hammered it, but it became known in, in the newspapers, even down in Florida. It's right. we it went Florida. national. It yeah. went national. Yeah. And Widener won the, uh, uh, what, was it, what, what, what award was that, the Whoopi Award or the uh, Open yeah, Records yeah. Award for the state of Wisconsin? I mean, because she was battling this, <clears throat> this case here. Uh, and now she talks to a newspaper reporter in Milwaukee. What does the city do? They come back and charge her with uh, contempt, of, contempt court. of court for talking outside of the sealed court case. She wasn't even supposed to talk about the fact that she was in court. And it would be very important to point at this, at this point, <clears throat> point out, is that she did not divulge anything with regards to the emails or what was in them. She didn't even know for certain what was in them because she didn't know which emails they were talking about. She just divulged that she had a court case. And she didn't violate any laws. Well, I understand she that. She didn't but, do but, any, but, right. but the, uh, the judge, Gashikevitz, said he made a, remember, public policy decision? Right. Not yeah. based on law, not based on the Constitution, based on what he thought was in the public interest. What he thought was in the public interest. Right, and where did he get his that. information about that? Probably from uh, Scott Letney and yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and well, this, was, this is all a big circle. Yeah. But because of what develops later, I'm just setting the stage here for that. She she never revealed what was in the court case itself. She just right. developed that she had a court case and that it was about open records. Mm -hmm. That was basically it. Exactly. So they drag her back in front of the judge. Uh -huh. He finds her, I don't know, roughly fifteen thousand dollars. Well, they state it until he keeps her mouth shut. You have to keep your mouth shut. She then files an appeal with the Court of Appeals. It takes a year for this Court of Appeals. And in this period of time, it's just this big lull time. They come back and say, well, 
uh, because the judge uh, did not let you uh, amend a complaint, uh, it should go back and be re redone. Reviewed, so, yeah. Reviewed. The judge should review if all of those emails are so secretive that they shouldn't be shown to anyone. Right. Or so the judge not. comes back and says, well, maybe these five here should be released. And they were bogus. You know, I think, hell, I think you and I were most of the ones that received them. You know, what they don't want is investigative reporting. That's the last thing they want in the city of Racine. And that's kept what we basically do. So, anyway. If there was something on machinery row, it was probably held back. Oh, yeah. Back I mean, then. what's but in there it, is deep. If it was that, it was that schedule of potential voting dates, that one yeah. might have been okay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but again, <laughs> but again, I'm just guessing. I'm just really just guessing. I have no idea. Well, yeah, we're kind of just guessing. But again, to reemphasize, the problem is the difference between the PowerPoint and what the court had on record. Right. There were two, two right. different that's things there. That's the yeah. crux. Yeah. And that's the reason she was shut down so hard and threatened with a $15,000 fine. Correct. So on and so forth. So. Peel Court comes back and says, you have to do it again. Do it again. Now this we're talking, we're already in the second year now. So it goes back to Gasker Gavich. Of course, obviously Widener does not want to be in front of him. As for a refusal, it goes to Judge Piantek in Racine. Uh, the city asked that it be, he be uh, taken from his court. It ends up down in Kenosha at Judge Chad Kirkman's court. And everybody's thinking, well, good. Good. You Maybe know, we'll we get it out of Racine. Territory. We'll, we'll take it out of the corruption here and we'll move it to the corruption in Kenosha. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's all that's happened. Yeah, pretty much. So now we can go into to Kirkman uh, and, and with his handling of this, this uh, uh, court case. <clears throat> We expected, you know, to have at least a legitimate uh, court, a hearing. It's and, Kenosha. It's yeah. clean little Kenosha. It's nice little Kenosha. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They don't have any problems like we <laughs> got. Nothing to see down there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, well, it goes to Kenosha and uh, in front of Kirkman, and the city of Racine says, hey, it can only be attorney's eyes only on this information because uh, Alderman Widener cannot be trusted uh, giving her any information. Now you have to remember, she's the plaintiff for crying out loud. She's the one taking the city in. Now all of a sudden the city is dictating to Kirkman, just like the city dictated to Gaskergevich, of what we're going to do here. It's attorney uh, eyes only. Uh, matter of fact, the first hearing that we did see on YouTube, I mean, uh, Alderman asked, if I have an objection, he shut her mic off. Of Sandy Widener. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So what did Kirkman decide? Well, Kirkman... Well, he upheld the Racine courts. Absolutely, he did. 100%. 100%. The amazing thing to me is even Gaskogevich released five emails. They're, they're, what, what was given to the Common Council, I actually read them, and it was bogus. <laughs> I mean, he, he gave it out to the whole Common Council after this whole thing. It should have been moot, as the city attorney said. It's moot, Your Honor. There's nothing here. This is what I gave, and there's nothing here. Kirkman takes it and seals the whole thing. Has he got any connection with the city? Oh, my God. The city of Racine? The city of Racine, yeah. or Corey Mason, or anybody yeah. in the city? Well, <laughs> I've heard that they, uh, they've <laughs> encountered one another on occasion. I mean, it's, it's like it's like he's part of the family. Is this, a, is this part of the brother? Part of the family, it, part it, of the family, <laughs> Kirkman. No, I mean, you know, we can, let, I, I kind of want to, let's start t putting a, let's start putting it together. Uh, I, you know, we don't really know uh, Kirkman and Kenosha. You know, we just assumed he's a judge that's going to make a decision on law and look at this and make a, like a, a legitimate decision. I mean, he's... That's why we went outside the city, because yeah. we could understand yeah. within the city there's there's connections and, and people are afraid to step on each other's foot. So let's just get it outside of the city where there's going to be a judge can look at it from a totally disparate third-party view. In other words, he's not going to be involved with it. Well, so again, that's all we were doing. Right, it comes down to that. That's just we. I well, mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's let's that's, let's do a, just a real quick review of who would be impacted by all of this information coming out. And again, it's John Dickert, it's Corey Mason, it's Scott Letney, uh, probably to a degree Tom Friedel and uh, Dennis Weiser, and it, you know anybody yeah. else that, and it actually goes up into the state level as well because Correct. there were people that were involved in those nine million dollars in the tax, tax credits. Right. right. So this was yeah. It, but it, those are the five. Those are the five. Those, main are, ones. those, are, the, those are the main ones. Thing. And and lo and behold, there appears to be some kind of relationship between that judge and some of the people who are most interested exactly. in none of this information right. getting out. Corey Mason, Rebecca Mason. Uh, there's a, a uh, there's a prosecutor in. Uh, uh, 
Kenosha Binger, who is good friends with Kirkman, who is also good friends with Mason and Becca. And of course, the whole appeals court is also connected to that Mason group and Democratic group with the Neubauers, which spread all over Racine County. Mm -hmm. you know, so you've got this whole connection here. It, I mean, the fingers are out down into Kenosha too. So when Kirkman seals this case, Here's my, my, my feelings are, let's just shoot that back up to the appeals court to where we had it before, to the same group that'll dance around with it up there, and burn this woman's clock up, burn uh, the, the uh, dollars up, and let's try to burn her out. Because they know they're wrong. The courts know they're wrong. And I believe the courts are covering for corrupt activity. That's what I really believe is happening uh, here. And sure, they know it looks it. that way. Yeah. So you've got a, 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 the local level uh, politicians who uh, created this boondoggle with Machinery Row. There's multiple different areas where they should be charged with misappropriation of funds. There's, there's all kinds of charges that should be done. The DA in Racine has done nothing. Now let's just go back to Binger, who ran against the DA in Racine. Binger? Uh, Tom Binger. Prosecutor okay. in Kenosha. Prosecutor in Kenosha. Mm -hmm. Ran against Trish Hansen, who was our DA. Okay. Democrat, Republican. This time around, there's nobody running against Trish Hansen, Republican. Why would they put multiple Democrats up against different persons in Racine to run? I mean, just low-level stuff. But I've, just all, aldermanic races. Aldermanic races, yeah. all of it. But yet, when you got the top dog in the DA's office, nobody runs against them. Here's my, my reading is, if the DA doesn't charge anybody with anything or investigate anything, I won't. We won't put up anybody to run against you. Yeah. Of course, Tom Binger is connected to Kirkman, who is connected again back to the Masons. I mean, this is just one big circle here. And to have Trish Hansen run unopposed is really very questionable. Nobody wants to run, and there's nobody in the Democratic Particularly Party after stuff she's been through. I mean, she's very. Beatable. She's, she's very she's beatable. vulnerable very at any vulnerable. rate as a result of some of these other things going well, on in Racine County. She should be, but yeah, Racine County, when you talk about anything west of the eye, it's very strong Republican territory. And unless they're cognizant of anything that on her record that would cause them to not want to vote for her, they're going to be very much prone to vote right. for her. Just but if a good campaign was run and was <clears> able to put that information in the hands of you know the voting public, they may have a, a, an opportunity to real race. But that wasn't done. And you're telling me you can go after, let's just take, for example, uh, uh, the 10th district in Racine, Corey, uh, Kerry Glenn. I mean, they put up someone against her that I thought was an absolutely horrible candidate. I don't even think he was, wanted to run. But they spent a tremendous amount of money to try to get her out. When you have a DA who they continually complain about, highest incarceration black, of black and, uh, young men, uh, the, the, all the different uh, decisions they've made on uh, the shootings, but yet there's nobody, no Democrats going to run against them. Right. And I'm going to tell you, I think this is the reason why. I think some of this falls back on this. There's a reason that they've gotten to Kirkman and closed this case up because there's got to be real fear in some of this being exposed. I like it when they're afraid, but it makes them uh, it, it makes them pretty testy. You yeah, know, I mean yeah, they it does. they get mean. Yeah, well, yeah. you know they do something wrong, they get caught at it, and then they get mean to cover it up. But nobody's held accountable, Doc. <clears throat> none of these none of these public officials are ever held, ac held accountable. Well, so there you are. You're up to date. <laughs> And uh, that's as much complaining as we're going to do today on air. Right. We might talk a little bit afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, air a little bit of complaining. But uh, we want to thank you for being here. We hope you learned something, and uh, we hope you come back next week.